I just thought I'd give you a quick shot of my little garden down the side of my house. Me a non-gardener. Now the back half is um, bare because of the simple reason I had some big leafed flowers that die off in the winter. Not flowers, I'm not quite sure what you'd call them, but uh, they really grow high. I can't remember the name of them. You can see where they've died off. I had them all along the back there. So now I've got to replant the back, but uh, I'm quite chuffed with that, as I'm not a gardener at all. That's how my little side garden has come. And I'm quite pleased with that. Anyway, what we're here in this video for is to talk about the Backy River. I want to push on with that as hard as I can. I'm also hoping to cover my pond down. So I want to get that done as well. The temperatures are now really dropping. So I do really need the covers on. The temperatures at night are getting down to 7, 7 degrees, 8 degrees, which is pulling the pond temperature down. So I really want to get the covers on. Right, well that's the first box where the water comes in. I have put a filter cage on there as you can see and I think what actually that will do is instead of the water just firing straight in the box at the other two, obviously the zipper axe is going to slow it down, but this will spread the water as well. Instead of it shooting into the box it's going to spread it, hopefully, so it spreads the flow a little bit more. So I've got a 40 mil filter cage on there and I've got the other two on the other side, the two inch ones and that's in the first box. Now in the second box as you can see that we've got the two two inch outflows and inflows with the filter cages on. That's the second box and in the third and final box we've got your two two inch inlets and then the weir that the water flows over and goes in and out of that two inch connection down there, that two inch tank connector down there. So that's the weir on the end. So it's all looking good up to yet. Okay guys, I'm in a bit of a dilemma here. Got a bit of a setback. I was hoping to actually get the trickle filter off the top of this moving bed because to be quite honest, it's a bit of a pain in the book stuck on there. I can't get at the moving bed at all. So I was hoping to get the river put in there and then the trickle filter underneath it and then run it back to the moving bed. Now the problem with that is the water level, once I get the trickle filter in this side, I won't be able to get the trickle filter high enough. It will be below the water level on the moving bed which is a bit of a problem so it's not going to fit underneath the river I was hoping to run from the river into the trickle filter and then back to the moving bed but unfortunately I don't have the room I can't get the river high enough so I've got to think of something else for the trickle filter so basically if I can't get it under there what I'm going to do is drop this shelf down I want to bring this shelf down here somewhere so that the pump's not got to lift the water that high now. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the trickle filter. I'm going to have to take that out and try to think of something else. I don't like it on the top of that moving bed. It, it is a pain. It's in the way to be honest. But I'll leave it for now. But what I want to do is drop this down now so I can get it at a reasonable height, about halfway on the shed, just so it's above the water level in the moving bed because that's where the water's going to run back to. So I've just got to reorganise these shelves and move obviously some stuff about in the shed to get it dropped down. So I've got one or two of the backs to extend and that sort of thing but that's going to set me back a little bit. I've got to take all this out and redo the shelf. Okay guys, that's the new proposed height. So the pump hasn't got so much work to do lifting it right up the top there. That should cut the head pressure on the pump down a little bit and I think that'll make it easier to maintain and easier to keep my eye on as well actually. I'm just waiting now for the pump, not quite sure when that'll be here. And then we can connect that up, I've got the outflow connected across to the moving bed for now. Like I say, the trickle filter's going to have to come off there, I can't get it in the moving bed, I can't clean out under there or anything. So I'm going to have to shut that down for now because I want it off there 
and I'll sure we'll have to think of something else for that. Well guys, I'm getting the back supports on the pond at the moment for the winter covers. I've got the struts across, so now it's just a matter of sorting the covers out and remembering which way round they go basically, I think. But that's got the back support on. Well guys, it's coming. Four down and we're nearly there. It's going quicker than I thought really. I'm getting on better than I thought it would. Let's press on. Well guys, now we know winter's coming. When you see that, it's a sad old sight. Can't see me fish every day. For the next three or four months, I suppose, three months. But there you go. Keeps them that little bit warmer. I can lift the sheets up, prop them up, and see them that way, but it's not the same. I always think the pond looks a mess with them on, but there's nothing you can do about it. I cover it down, it does keep them that few degrees warmer and I'm not having the heater this year so it's uh, going to be a bit colder for them they're going to get a bit of a shock but there you go well guys I'm going to call that it for tonight it's just starting to get dark and we've got a lovely up there I don't know whether this will take it but we've got a lovely red sky red sky at night, shepherd's delight so I'll see you guys tomorrow Well guys, my new pump's come for the Bucky River. I did order the 5,000 and it seems they've sent me the 6,500. So I've got a bigger pump than I paid for. So uh, I can press on now and get this thing sorted out. Great stuff. I'll get it installed. I'm going to try installing it into the bottom of the actual filter itself in the drum filter. So it's getting a clean water feed all the time. I'm going to try taking it from that bottom corner there and then take it round to the river. As it is the bigger pump, I might have to put some sort of tap in there to slow it down, I'm not sure. But we'll see what the 6,500 will do. Like I say, I only ordered the 5,000. So we'll see how it goes. Okay guys, what I'm doing here is carrying on from the non-return valve around the back of the third box and then it's got to come down across down and up to here so that's what I'm doing at the moment just doing the 40 mil piping round to where the pump will be okay guys the job so far I've got the river in down that side I've got the outflow to the moving bed done and the feed pipe I've taken from the non-return valve end at the back I've got that down and across and down to the pump that's where the pump's going to sit I've now got to just bring it across and connect it into the bottom of the RDF so that's what I've got left to do at the moment so it's just gone off um, that's what I've got left to do so it's just that little bit of piping across there to the RDF everything else is done I've got I've put, just put the zipper racks in to have a look what sort of depth I've got in these um, boxes which isn't too bad at all so that's not going to be too bad I'm not quite sure yet whether I'm going to drop the weir a little bit I might just cut that down just a little bit more, I don't want too much depth in that box but uh, it's all coming along well at the minute I shall take that out and just give it a rinse in pond water before I do it because it can be quite dusty stuff and just clean the bottom of them boxes out but I just wanted to know really what sort of level of Ciparax I got with the amount I got it's not cheap stuff this Ciparax I'll tell you now now apparently I've heard that with this Ciparax the water flow doesn't want to be too much you've got to uh, slow your water flow down I've been told too fast through this and your anaerobic bacteria will become aerobic bacteria and it's the anaerobic we want and apparently the slower the water passes through it the better so if anybody out there knows any different let me know but that's what I've been told your water doesn't want to pass too fast 
through this zipper axe. Now in this back stretch that goes round to the one one way valve, I want to drop a ball valve in there so I can actually control the flow. So I do want to drop a ball valve in that stretch that comes up from the pump. I want to get that sorted next. So I haven't ordered one, I haven't bought one. I have one down there that I've used before in the other shed. So what I'm going to try to do is clean it up, get the pipe out of it and see if I can use that. Okay guys, this is the length of pipe the ball valve's got to go in. And this is the ball valve I'm hoping to use. So I've got to try to rescue this one. I shall be cutting it off at the end of the ball valve either end and then I shall use my heat gun to heat it up and try to get the 40mm pipe out of the ball valve. Okay guys, I've got this end cut off as you can see. The other end there's enough 40 mil on there, I can get a straight connector on there, so there's no need to mess about with that end. So it's just this end of the ball valve that I should be doing. So I'm going to heat that inner 40 mil pipe up in that ball valve, and see if we can get it out. Um, I'm going to try to get it on video for you, but holding the phone with one hand and trying to get it out with the other is quite difficult. I've got... Well guys, unfortunately I couldn't show you, I tried to video it, but I just hadn't, I had to have two hands to get the pipe out. But I've got the pipe out, what I'm doing now is just warming it, warming the end, as you can see it's quite pliable on that end. So what I'm going to do now is just slide a 40mm piece of pipe in there, and that is just so as it cools, it will settle down to the size of the pipe in case I've distorted it at all. That looks pretty good actually, but we've got it out, as you can see I got my pliers on it, that was it, I did get it out, I'm sorry I couldn't show you, but I did need two hands, I did try, but I needed two hands, but I've got the old piece of pipe out, I've got a 40mm piece of pipe that actually fits in there, so it looks like uh, all's gone well, we've saved the ball valve, that saved me 7 or 8 quid. And there you have it guys, that's the one, that's the ball I will be using. It does leave them slightly rough inside as you can see, but that really doesn't matter because your solvent adhesive, your solvent glue, will melt that anyway. So as long as you put plenty of glue on it, and don't forget, if you ever um, glue one of these ball valves, always glue them together facing down so the glue doesn't run into the ball valve itself always have it facing downwards if you're doing that end um, to stop any glue going into the ball valve itself actually but that will go fine and don't forget push your piece of 40mm in there once you've got the piece of pipe out to make sure that it's still a nice round shape that you haven't distorted it at all with the heat and you'll be fine and like I say the other end it had got a piece of pipe in anyway so I'm not going to disturb that um, what I've got here is a 40 mil straight connector so I should be dropping that I'll just drop that on that end and that'll sort that end out I can solve and weld that on there and then get that into this piece of pipe and that saved me buying a wall valve and there we go guys that's it in situ coming across and then going down to the pump I have used two 45 degree bends there as you can see um, on that top because it won't restrict the flow so much or slow the flow so much as the 90s do. It just gives it that little bit more of ease of turning the water. They work just that little bit better. They're not as harsh as the 90 elbow. Well guys, yet another setback I'm afraid. I was thinking I was going to come through this side of the uh, RDF with a 40mm coupler with a 40mm tank connector and I'm not thinking that the 40mm tank connector the thread on it isn't long enough to come through that 3 quarters of an inch 18mm fly it don't give me enough room to get the nut on so what I've got to go for is a 2 inch 
which I haven't got, I've got to go through it with a 2 inch and then uh, reduce it to 40 mil. So unfortunately it's Friday afternoon now and I'm not going to get anything before sort of Tuesday or Wednesday next week. So another setback I'm afraid. Well guys I've just been on to my local pond supplier and he can't get anything or he hasn't got anything all he's got is 40 mil that's the biggest he's got so he won't be getting anything till next week so I've just gone online and the earliest I can get them even if I pay extra postage is Tuesday next week so like I said before this has really set me back it's only Friday today so it's set me back another four days so what I'll do now is I'll get the trickle filter, I've got it shut down, I'll get that off the top there ready. This should take the place of the trickle filter actually, I mean this will do your anaerobic and aerobic bacteria. Apparently it is really good stuff and I've just been reading up a little bit about it and it says it does cope with the faster or slower flows. So we'll see what happens but I can't do anything more until next week on it I'm afraid so I'm stuck well there we go guys daylight returns to the moving bed it's out and I can get at the moving bed again I want to sort that out I think I've got to put some more air in there with the amount of media I've got in there I think uh, I've got that much media in there it's not turning it over properly so I've got to sort the air out in there which I can do now uh, yeah that was a right pain just there I've got to admit but it's out now so it's all down to waiting for the two inch um, tank connectors well guys unfortunately that's it for this one so all that's left to say is thanks for watching take care and happy ponding